Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Get Your Paint On here, February 13th. It's a wonderful Thursday morning. I am joined by three wonderful people, three wonderful humans, specifically. We have a Will Hungerford. Hello. We have a Tony Konachek. Good morning. And a Tanner Thomas. Hello. This is like one of my favorite guys around here. He's He's got, he's got cool painting skills. My heart is dude. melting. We're going to go into the intro real quick just to get on through this so we can start painting. Uh, let's go to the schedule here real quick. Uh, pretty normal schedule. We've got a hobby hangout on the 21st, staff showdown on the 25th, uh, and your standard dev hangout and get your paint on Thursdays. Um, I don't have a lot of extra information on the staff showdown or the hobby hangout for you guys, but uh, we'll keep you updated as we get more information there. Uh, subscriptions. Uh, Riot Quest Loot Coin is available once we get to 120 subs. Thank you all of our subscriptions who are, or subscribers, excuse me, who are currently contributing to us. You guys get your sweet emotes. Uh, we'll get you that Riot Quest Loot Coin emote. So we'll get on to that. We've got Savage Mini Crate. We've got a new model starting today. We have Valyria. Uh, it's a sweet little model. Dual wheel and swords, kind of kind of rad. And then your VIP model, which is Red Sonia. So that's the uh, Valerian model is going to be available through March 12th, and Red Sonia is available through that's what July 12th, I believe, right? Hunger Hungerford, do you no know? Problem. Can you tell me who Valeria is? Because it's an, actually not a character I'm familiar with. In the, I will during in the, the stream. Series, right? It's a, a fair amount of information, and let's get let's get them painting, and I'll, I'll talk about Valeria. Sounds good. Right yeah. on. Cool. And our model today is the fantastic. The fantastic. Wonderful. Oh, wow, this is actually zoomed out really far. Chuck <laughs> Dogwood. Um, get it. Oh, that's not the right button. Did I mess it up? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where is it? Tony, is this a do I camera? Do I need to come over there? You do need to come over okay, here. Okay, I'll be right there. There's, there's, there's usually like don't a little, make Tony come over a there. little like thing that you pull to the side that zooms you in, and I don't know if this is a new camera or I'm just silly, but uh, yeah, whoops. Is it, is it still on the top and I was just missing it? Weird, okay. Well, we got Chuck Dogwood on today. Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna talk a whole lot about him. We're gonna, we're gonna see who this mysterious man of mystery is. Um, yeah, we're gonna paint him up. This mysterious man so, of mystery. <coughs> so, Hungerford, tell us about him. Well, I was gonna say a couple quick things. So to, we don't spend uh, uh, too, too long. Uh, Tony, Valeria? is she's basically like a pirate adventurer in the Robert E. Howard books. She okay. is like the Black Bella of the Conan verse. All right. Uh, so she's just a straight up badass adventuress is the N best way to put it. Is she, an, is she an actual contemporary of Conan? Like, do they exist in the same, oh, absolutely. same world no. and timeline? 100%. Okay. 100%. Uh, and also in the 1982 Conan the Barbarian movie, like the original uh, Arnold one. Okay. That was the name given to one of his uh, love interests in the movie. Oh. Was Larry. So, um, the other thing we, we messed up, one little thing is we introduced uh, the non-Jordan painter as Tanner Thomas or something, but as he has been rebaptized uh, in the Staff Showdown, this is Dr. Augustus Wigglebilly. So. Yes. I have been born again. Dr. Augustus. And I, uh, I got to say, it feels great. Uh, so Chuck Dogwood, uh, Chuck Dogwood is a Riot Quest oh, character. But before you go into this, let's oh, talk sorry. a little bit about what colors we're using. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is Great Coat Gray with a little bit of Thamar Black in it. And I'm going to highlight it back up with Great Coat Gray and then a little bit of uh, Trollblood Highlight after mixed in. And so, which part of him are you painting with that color? The cloak, his okay. like hood and cloak. You are you doing like a, like, a, like a gray, like a dark color? Yeah, like a gray or a black. I'm not sure if I'm going to push it into a black yet. but Tanner center up just a little bit. When we get to it. Ten year a little off screen. Oh, I was too south. What color are you doing, yeah. Doctor? So I've got an Doctor. Ordic olive mixed with a little bit of Ios and green. Ios and green is actually one of my favorite paints. It's absolutely my favorite green. There oh man, I don't know how. Maybe I gave him. I gave him the silent, silent poke from behind. Sweet. Tell us about this, there, Chuck Dogwood. Sure. Yeah. Sorry, uh, for, sorry for interrupting. No, no, I, I, it's, it's all good. So uh, Chuck is a character in Riot Quest, uh, primarily also playable in War Machine and Hordes. He's the last druid of Oboros is his uh, title. Whether or not that's true or not, it's hard to know because he is a, uh, uh, what's what I'm looking for? A, uh, what kind of narrator is it? Unreliable. Unreliable, He's yeah. an unreliable narrator. Uh, effectively, he's completely bat poop insane. Uh, he has lost his mind. He wanders now the ruins of Western Imran in the Riot Quest timeline, which is the post-apocalyptic timeline where the Infernals won. 
Um, his connection to the ley lines is all messed up because the ley lines are all messed up. He himself was a bit of an amateur wold artifice, artificer. Uh, he's not like Balder levels or even a stone shaper level by any means, but he can get some stuff done. Unfortunately, his mind's a bit fragmented. So uh, the only company he has is a little wold that he made into a hand puppet. Now, the wold itself is animated. It does move and, like, you know, moves its arms and moves its head independent. He just wears it on his hand like a puppet so that someone who sees him might think Chuck is controlling its actions, but he's not. He's just kind of wearing it almost like a, a falconer would keep the bird on their arm. Uh, and Woldy, his little buddy, is the only company he has. Uh, his main weapon is the, his whistling staff, which is part of a broken shifting staff. Uh, Chuck can teleport, and he can teleport others, but not reliably whatsoever, because both the, the natural energies he uses and his own brain are fragmented to the point where he channels the energy, and then whatever may come, may come. So if we were to take the VHS collection of Riot Quest Season 1, and we put in episode 16 in our VCR, Enter the Dogwood. Uh, the episode is primarily our protagonists. Oh, uh, crap. Eris, Dez, <clears throat> Gubbin, uh, Bamfist, and Dreyfus, and Widget. And, you know, they've just come back from a good looting. They escaped uh, oh, Boomhaller. jeez. And uh, Chuck shows up, just grabs Gubbin, and just teleports away with him. And the whole episode is them trying to catch Chuck because he just keeps <laughs> teleporting nonstop. Not oh, Gubbin. God. By the way, Jordan is about to... Uh, Cause this whole place to fall down. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm trying to tell the background of Chuck. And, <laughs> and Jordan's destroying his station. It's very, it's very apropos that things are just going so, chaotic and crazy as you're talking about it. There's like little feet on, on the camera next to me. And uh, I dropped my paint brushes and I scooted out and over so I could get them. And then it hooked on, onto one of the legs. And when I move myself back into position it just drugged the stand with me so now sorry twitch was... chat well we're, we're we're talking about his background real quick some people are asking like how did this become a model so i actually want to talk about this how chuck came to be this is because this is one of my favorite stories about any model that we've ever made when we were doing some war machine battle uh, staff showdowns and this was i think two year and a half two years ago mm -hmm. We were like fighting on a swamp table and it was like Scorn versus Signar or something, right? It was, it was two forces that probably would not meet in a swamp. And I wasn't playing, but I was there like providing commentary. And I started saying like, how, how is this even happening? Like, how are these two forces here? What's our narrative behind this story? And off color, I mentioned Maybe there's an insane druid who just teleported these two armies to fight each other for his own amusement. Some wacko, like a druid, I don't know, Chuck Dogwood. And what happened is Twitch chat, all of you watching right now, went, went crazy. Just were like, I'm in. And so Chuck Dogwood started getting mentioned more and more on chat. And so we started mentioning him a bit more and more during the, negative, uh, the, uh, the narrative battles. Not the negative battles. I don't know what those are. <laughs> there are no negative battles. <laughs> They're the narrative battles. And it just sort of organically grew between a weird off-color remark and then Twitch chats latching on to the name and the idea. And so when the time came, finally pitched it to Matt, and I explained that this kind of grew out of the community and the stream liking it and that it was kind of a fun homage to, to, to that. And uh, here it is. That's a wonderful story. <laughs> oh, Jeff, it has a bit of an abrupt ending. But. Hanley corrected me. It was not a War Machine game. It was a Company of Iron Which, game. Hence the, hence the narrative portion of that. Like but it was the it same idea. Sense, it, was, yeah. it was two forces that shouldn't have been fighting in a swamp. Yeah. Now, like, I mean, the concept came up. We had, you had shown me this in playtesting. I was very excited. I was like, I couldn't believe that Chuck Dogwood was being proposed for Riot Quest. Uh, but then last year, during uh, our April Fool's announcement... We put out the art for Chuck Dogwood because, you know, we thought this is going to be something great for April Fool's because it's a real thing we're doing that everyone will think is fake. Um, and at that point, we still had to, there was a little bit of convincing to do that we were, we were moving forward with it and that people would care. As it turns out, they do. They do care. <laughs> I care. I love it. So, speaking of Jeff, his... Uh 
Circle Army, a lot of his wolds and stuff were made out of like a sandstone material. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking that would be really fun to do on his staff and his little wold puppet here. So I'm starting off just with uh, Battlefield Brown to do the wood on his staff. And I can also work that up to a tan on the, st on the stone. Sweet. Um, I'm using a little bit of uh, Gnarl's green here to base coat his jacket. Uh, Screw Fizzle asks, Chuck Dogwood comes out in April or March. I believe it's April because March is just the gear expansion that we covered on yesterday's dev stream. That's Ooh. the only Riot Quest uh, product in March. I can't wait to get my hands back on that turret, though, honestly. The, 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 the real hyper turret? Hypervelocity turret? Yeah, it's super. I mean, as you saw in our game, it blocked off the entire portion of the ship and made getting around it completely miserable. I was just telling uh, these guys before we started the stream today that I played another two rounds on that map last night, yeah. and it is just a ridiculous amount of fun. It's it is. Yeah. If you uh, if you missed our earlier streams in the week, uh, we had a Riot Quest game staff showdown that had a preview of a lot of the new <coughs> gear expansions, and then you get full cards and details for all those expansions on yesterday's Dev Hangout. So go check them out. Yeah, I'm excited for that expansion. It's gonna be a lot of fun. <coughs> so question for each of you as you're painting and mm -hmm. i think this is going to be a key point of anybody's chuck mm -hmm. is what color are you painting his beard his giant lustrous very red Ooh, red nice yeah. like a, like a burly like traditional red haired beard like the the guy in game of thrones yeah yeah torment yeah 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 what about uh what about you doctor <sighs> you know i was gonna go for a, a little salt and pepper action uh but man, I, I really like the idea of going colorful. Now yeah, that it, it also will stand out really well against the like the dark cloak and the green jacket. You know what? I think so. I'm gonna go straight straight white, old man white, old, old man white. Like All right, I'm into it. Uh, Alex says, "When can I buy this legendary model?" I believe April is when the model is releasing. Uh, Screw Fizzle is asking for hot pink tips on the beard. By the Ooh. way, uh, uh, second. If only Lauren were here. Lauren would do hot pink tips. Absolutely. Mm. We were painting, uh, she was painting up Scythe, and we were just like taking uh, audience suggestions, and obviously it was like, what color are we gonna use for her wings? And everybody's like, hot pink. <laughs> <coughs> Is it Lauren that has the rainbow angel? Yeah, those rainbow. wings are awesome. Yeah, yeah, I thought, I thought it was. The Marwan Archon, yeah. yeah. Screw fizzle. Jordan definitely has the skill needed to do hot pink tips. He just does not want to. Just Correct. because you can do something doesn't, doesn't mean, mean you should. should. Now, yeah. your scientists were so preoccupied. I say that, and Chuck Dogwood is the topic today, <laughs> which goes right in the face of that piece of advice. That's definitely in the intersection of the Venn diagrams, right? Uh, the lesson is, do as he says, not as he does. Uh, yeah. Jeff That's Hanley true. has come in and correct me because he knows the release date's much better than I do. Chuck comes out in two weeks on okay. February 8th. Uh, yeah, 28th. Chuck comes out in, in February. Get your Chuck up in here. Man, I'm, I'm like designing stuff in 2021. I don't, my brain is so not on like what is actually here. What year is it? That has been a problem for so long. It's, it's, hard, like, it's hard to keep track. It's like, wait, how do you know the rules for that? And like, it came out two months ago. I'd be like, oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about one of my favorite highlight colors for basically anything, and it's moldy ochre. Okay, but, but, do it, but do it on camera, yeah, like Jordan. a professional. Wow. You know what? You know what? Dude, All right, ice in Tony's veins. All right. <laughs> we spend so, so much time talking about how nice he is. <laughs> I think he's just trying to prove us wrong at this point. Is cold black your favorite shading color? Yeah, it's, it's the most versatile one. Okay. I really like it a lot. Um, but like moldy ochre does, has this like really nice greenish highlight tone. I I like it for highlighting like grays or blacks a lot. Um, but it, it works for basically anything. Like you name it, you can highlight it with moldy ochre. Really, and it'll look good. Yeah. Really. All right. Do you think if I was doing well, let's say a ridiculous color, hot pink. I did say almost anything, but yeah, you could probably make that work. Okay. What, what color, in your opinion, wouldn't it be good for as a highlight? What's one that just pops in your head? Um, I mean, hot pink is probably the least functional <laughs> one. Okay. Um, I mean, it, it looks really good with blue. It looks really good with greens. Um, what about a bright, bright red? Like a, uh, a super, like, blood red. Like a fire truck yeah, red. Yeah, I mean, it, it would just make it desaturated. Okay. Yeah. okay. It, it would just, like... It would have like a, it'd be like saturated red and then it would go into like a really desaturated highlight. 
which Whoa, creates that contrast, is brown. which is what you want. Whoops. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's 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 a weird color, and it kind of just works with everything. Fix that up quick. So, what would you say? You said moldy right ochre, or yeah. so on top of say like a like a tan leather, like a rucksack tan. Mm -hmm. That to me sounds like that would be really awesome. Does that work good? Yeah, yeah. So. It, it definitely will work there. I like to use um, a lot of colors when I do highlights for, like, I know that's a s silly thing to say, but what I mean by it is if I'm highlighting a blue, I want to use a non-blue adjacent color to highlight with because it's more visually appealing. Just because there's, like, more contrast between the two colors? Yeah, exactly. It creates its own form of, like, weird... I'm going to move forward. Sorry. I like my my positioning that was right at the beginning of the stream is no longer correct because of me because totally of the destroying the setup. Sorry, Tony. Uh Jeff Hanley asks when we get these so I don't know if y'all know about this in Twitch now, you can get channel points the more you watch. Mm -hmm. And channel points can be redeemed for like a 24-hour unlock of an emoji. Ooh, nice. uh, okay. Or one of the things you can do is highlight your message. So what I'll try and do whenever I'm reading chat is if I see a highlighted message, unless it's something I obviously can't read, I will try and read those out. Nice. So PPS one? Hanley uh, has a highlighted message. It says, also, we need to address the elephant in the room. Hungerford is Chuck Dogwood's art direction based on your close friend, Chad Hotard. Uh, the answer is no. I did not specifically base it off Chad. I said I wanted a um, big, broad-shouldered, burly druid hobo who looked like he was mildly deranged you just described uh, chad and yeah and then what happened is i just accidentally kind of described chad uh but uh, merely coincidental completely coincidental I, and i don't even know if the sculptor who did it which i believe was nate if i'm not mistaken uh i'll confirm that because i do not want to give credit incorrectly to anyone uh may not even know who, who chad is so So. Screw Fizzle, though, that is his last name. All right, so this cloak's coming along here. Pretty happy with how this is turning out. Mine's still a little wet, so I'm hitting his belt in his shirt with that same Battlefield Brown base coat. And I'm going to take the uh, shirt up to kind of a more light brown color. So what are all these dots on the back of his cloak? Isn't that like an Elvis type thing with like? Oh sequins? yeah, I was gonna mention that before, but we were talking about something else. So w maybe if one of you can kind of bring it up to the camera a little bit and see, it might be a little out of focus there. But he's got like a bedazzled uh, eagle on his back, right? Is yeah, it an eagle. It's a storm raptor, dude. Storm raptor, but that, but just like all done up with uh, rhinestones. Yep, uh, we do have confirmation, in, uh, and I thought it was Nate. Nate Brooks was the sculptor of this model. Uh, he's actually in our Facebook uh, stream right now. So Nate, excellent job! You know everything you sculpt looks great, and this is no exception. Yeah, and the and the likeness is pretty right on, <laughs> despite not knowing Chad. Honestly, this is a really really fun sculpt. I do I, I knew, do like the sculpt a lot. I knew he was going to be good character. looking at the art, but I'm. <clears throat> actually even more impressed than I expected to be. He's very cool looking. I've been talking to a lot of people that they, that's one of the things they really like about Riot Quest from a painting aspect is that since you're not doing an army, right, you're not doing a cohesive like faction of any yeah. kind, every model can be a complete individual, letting you just start fresh every time and just stay yeah. creative. And it's that really nice. the models themselves are fairly straightforward to paint. Mm -hmm. Like some of them have a bit more going on, but then for every, for every Gurgle Pox, you've got a Destructotron. Right. Yeah. Right, exactly, well, and Gurgle yeah. Pox isn't even that complicated. Like he's got more interesting things going on. But who's the most complex model to paint? You think? Because you painted them all. Of all the Ryquest models, uh, Helga uh, Two excluded. Yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, yeah, I mean, she's pretty. There's a lot going on there. I mean, a lot. Most of it's just metal. So you can just paint her. Like I painted mine in six, four, like two, three, four hours maybe. Okay. Well, who's who's the most so. complex, and who is the the most straightforward in your opinion? Um. The most straightforward James is James for yeah. sure. Yeah. Painted her in an hour and a half. Yeah. Okay. Like there's just that's just dry brush some metal, do like a real real clean wash, and then you know, pick out your highlights and then do your glow effects if you want to do glow effects. 
there's not a whole lot going on there. Not that it's a bad model. It's just it's not a complicated model. Okay. Um, most, most complicated. Most complicated. I'm thinking through all 24 models that we have now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to nominate Gubbin. Really? He's got a lot going on in his little Got backpacks. It. He's got several he boxes, bags, huh. different fireworks. I mean, you can paint them all the same color in the same way, or you can, you know, yeah. change it up a bit. He's got a lot of little bits and I mean, I have a soft spot for He's the first RideQuest model I ever painted. Yeah. My first, first was studio. Spoonhaller and then Bella. <clears throat> I'm surprised nobody said Wendell. Wendell's not that bad. He's got a lot going on. I like when his, people do his gremlins all three different colors. I remember his pants you know and what? jacket being very straightforward, though. I think, um, oh, what's her name? Give me a description. Exosuit. Uh, Boss McHorn. Boss McHorn. I think Boss McHorn. Was the hardest? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I've painted like There's a lot of those. detail in where, like, where her exosuit meets her, like, regular clothing. There's, there's like, a, a fluffy, like... Padding. Padding mm -hmm. that you need to paint. Mm -hmm. Or you don't need to, but you that should. You, that you can. <laughs> uh, so we have a highlighted message. Uh, somebody's redeemed their channel points. This is from Screw Fizzle. He mm -hmm. says, uh, Can you ask Jordan, and he puts in parentheticals, who has a very high painting skill? It's a little bit of praise there for you. Ooh, no. Can you ask Jordan if he, has, if he can free paint an image on the cape? How would he go about doing freehand painting? Do you outline it on paper and try to add it onto the model? So even if you can't freehand on the cape, because I know it's already got the, the yeah, rhinestone image, but he's just asking about freehanding and how you do it. Um, you just go for it. So I think the easiest way to do freehanding is you take the image that you want to do. Uh, I'll just use the back of my hand as a good example. Um, and like, let's say I want to do... Uh, What's a good example? Well, how about just uh, recreating the eagle, but not on rhinestones or the storm raptor? Just the well, bird shape. Here, here's yeah, what, so Jordan, here's one you could do real easy. That's also useful to people. That people free, would recognize. Freehand a number. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for a lot of people, like, say you do Beast 09 or other jacks, like just putting like an 06 on your hand and how you yeah. would freehand that. So the first thing is your, your paintbrush obviously doesn't work the same way that a pencil does, right? A pencil will stay straight and the way you move it will stay exactly, like the point will stay exactly where you want it to. A paintbrush obviously bends and flexes, right? So you wanna do, you wanna do strokes to generate the, the number or what have you that you want um, without causing, or I'll do this on, on the side of this. This would be a good example. We got a little box here. Uh, so let's say I want to paint uh, Beast 09 on this, right? So get to a comfortable spot. Obviously, I'm left-handed, so this will be a little different. Um, and for, I'll start with the 9. So it depends on what we want to do. Do we want to do like a boxy 9? If we want to do a boxy 9, it's easier. You just start with a straight line, another straight line, another straight line. I, I try to keep all of the, the vertical lines, I do the vertical lines first, and then I'll do the horizontal lines. So I'll do the zero next. And a lot of this is like keeping a steady hand too, so you wanna keep, uh, and you wanna keep your distance just about the same for both these numbers. So practice in a steady hand, I'm gonna rotate this real quick. I'm gonna do a line for the zero. Also rotating a whole bunch. That's one thing yeah, I learned. Yeah, you could definitely have to rotate it. I just freehanded a bunch of words onto a miniature I was painting. Uh, they had a like a, 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 like a biker jacket that has the banners on the back. Mm -hmm. And so I was writing the name, like names on yep. them. And I learned that like rotating my miniature helped a ton. Yep. So that's, yep. that's what you do for like blocky. Um, for, for a like standard flowy number, um, I usually try and do like the top half swish. So something that's like easy to do with the positioning that you have where you don't have to do like weird under like this sort of stuff because your brush is gonna mess up when it does, does this underside. But if you do the over, right, you have a lot more control and it doesn't flex quite as much. So you wanna keep the flex of your brush to a minimum when you're doing the strokes to create the number, so. So are you saying that if you are going to do a stroke that required you to dip it down, 
that you want to rotate the miniature 180 degrees so that yeah. you're basically painting it upside down so that you can get that uh, top stroke on it instead. Yep. So, and, and you can kind of do it a little bit if you do short, shorter strokes like this um, without getting the flex. And also, don't press very hard. You want, just want to hit the tip of the brush to the surface when you're doing this, and that reduces the amount of flex that you get on the brush when you're, you're painting the, the symbol in. So there's your circle for the nine. And then... Yeah, you're. And so this is a downward stroke, so this is easy to do with my position as it is. There's your nine, and then your zero. And a lot of it is like going back over. Like so touching up the under layer, layer to make cleaner lines. Yeah. Cause, and that's the other thing is like a lot of painting uh, like freehand stuff, you're going to go back in with your base coat and you're going to cover up mistakes. So for instance, let's say the base coat on this was moldy ochre. I would go back in and I would touch up this, this line. Sorry, I got to get the glare off of it. And I would touch up the line so that it kind of covers up some of the mistakes and it keeps it all uniform, right? So I'd go on the bottom side here and I'd cover it up like so, right? See how clean that looks now? And that's with one brighter color over a darker color. So <coughs> that's, that's usually what you want to do. And same thing with like this zero, right? Because there's a lot of little mistakes and you can kind of refine the shape of your zero with your base coat afterwards to get it to be exactly what you want. It's like a, you know, conceptual carving. You're like putting yeah. in your marks and then you're, you're carving them back out again. Yep. So that's, I hope that answered your question. Yeah. Um, but for like more complicated stuff, um, like what's a, the Signar emblem, right, is a pretty the good swan. example. The swan. Um, which, I don't remember exactly what it looks like. It's kind of like... It's got a long neck and one of these, looks. right? This is just like super. And then the swung neck goes up like this, I think. Or it might go like this. I don't really remember. I'm afraid to help me. Uh, it'd probably be easier if I just bring up yeah, the... Yeah, if you bring it up, I can... I'm trying to think how I... like. Or the how how or does the one describe a visual logo to someone? Yeah, or the protector at one. That works too. The Metafix, that's... Yeah, the Metafix is... Metafix. But if I bring up... That's a lot easier. Uh, oh, thank you, Tony. Oh, there we go, yeah. Sorry, it's me, been a while since I've okay, done the Signar. perfect. Ten, Tony, flag. Flag. All right, so... Just do the Kador Anvil, it's easy. So what I would do is I would do the outline of the Signar flag. So um, I'd start with the little S for the neck of the bird. Or the swan, excuse me. Which would be right there. Right. And then I would do the two wings that go up until into the middle, like this. And you can see I'm doing small little strokes to keep it even. And going back down into there. And then... Center up on camera just a little bit, please, Roy. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Well, you're trying to freehand and be on camera at the same time, yeah. and the station got slightly wiggled, so. So I'm so actually going to go all the way down and create a whole circle. So simple shapes, right? So I'm, I'm doing the bulk of the shaping with this initial bit, right? And then there's a little cutout that goes around here like that. Another one here like that and then basically I'll just go back over this little line and then I'll widen this neck so that it joins up 
That's what I was going to say is like, uh, I was going to point out that you just kind of did a little sketch line S for the neck and then you'll be able to, so for those fine details, you just kind of go back in and thicken them up once yep. you've laid them in. Yep. Exactly. So rather than drawing an outline for everything, you can just kind of yeah. add some more paint to fill it out. I mean, that's, that's basically what it is. Nice. Thanks, George. And then you just go back in, you clean it up, and then you're done. Uh, we have another highlighted question. This one, don't worry, it's, it's for me, so you can actually okay. get back to painting your chuck. Cool. Yeah. Uh, the question is from a non -by, by proxy. It says, uh, what do you guys think about doing a request model that can replace an existing solo one-to-one -one so you don't have to come up with a new rule set, like the uh, order of the fist or racks of protectorate? These are easily swappable and are often conversion pieces because the sculpts are older. Uh, my thought is I do not want to do that at all, ever. Um, I want Riot Quest models to be new, to fill and fit the character of, of this timeline. Uh, I want them to provide something fresh. And if we were going to do re-sculpts of older models, like Rax or uh, you know, old Allegiance and things like that, I think those should just be their own sculpts. They should be done separate and sold as the War Machine of Hordes models they are. I don't think they need to be shoehorned through Riot Quest or anything else. It's a reason that a lot of people said, well, were you ever going to go backwards and make War Machine models playable in Riot Quest? And the answer is no. Um, we want Riot Quest to be its own, own line of, of miniatures that is specifically this and has its own branding. And when someone goes to the store, they can go to our Riot Quest section and they can just pick their heroes because it's a much simpler, much more casual game than, than War Machine. So I'm not saying that you won't see resculpts of those things you're asking for, but I wouldn't slot them into Riot Quest just to get them done. Uh, DGC says, aren't Riot Quest models characters? In Riot Quest, they are. Uh, but, for example, the Mechano Shredder that's coming out uh, is playable at, at FA2 in War Machine of Hordes, whereas the, um, the Pig Tanks had two builds, one to be lead foot and treads and one to be generic Pig Tanks. So most times they are characters. 99% of the time they are, but not always. Doctor, what have you been up to? I threw a Doctor. little bit of cardic flesh uh, for the base coat on his skin. Usually I go a little lighter than this, but I feel like Chuck has probably spent a fair amount of time outside in the sun, being that he's a druid, so I want to keep it uh, a little, little darker and use a slightly browner wash, so instead of the standard skin wash, I'm going to use Cossite flesh wash when I get there. Uh, see, Wrecked and Confused on Twitch says, so no order of the fist. Now, I didn't say there wouldn't be an order of the fist. I just said... If we did a Riot Quest Allegiant, it would be a brand new character. And that would be awesome. Yeah, it would be a new monk that has something about him that feels Riot Quest-y oh. and, and fits that, that timeline. And then we'd still be playing War Machine and Hordes. It wouldn't just be an Order of the Fist. We would want to create something that looks unique and cool. Also, I don't necessarily know that they were specifically talking about the sculpt for a legion of the Order of the Fist, but that is the... Uh, he, that's the, the one of the ones they mentioned. The monk who's kicking into the air, right? Yeah. That he, model is awesome. He, Dude, in, I love that model. A non-by-proxy's original quote was Punch Monk, but I know that not everybody... Like, I know who what Punch Monk and Kicky Monk mean. Kicky Monk is, is one that I'm familiar with. But not everybody knows, like... If I say, you know, Death Chicken or Gaspy or a lot of the, the vernacular of, of the, the, like the lingo of the game. Not everybody knows what those mean. So yeah, there's a lot of like nicknames that people have given yeah. many I, of the models. I try to usually say the normal name. It just becomes less complicated and every single person will know what it is. When I first started working here many years ago, I didn't know a lot of those nicknames and had no idea what was going on despite the fact that I knew all the models and who the characters were. And so I just kind of had to relearn like that whole new vocabulary. Yeah. yeah. You, you can walk up to a machine table and hear stuff that if you don't know what's going on, it just literally it sounds doesn't. like a different language. Yeah, you're going to be like, all right, Gatsby 2 is going to pop feet. You scooping? And somebody's like, what did that person just say? <laughs> Everyone on this stream right now knows exactly what I said. Did I have to grow up in a certain area to understand this? It's that Bayou lingo that you brought with you. That Bayou lingo. Uh, Gornis78 says, are we going to get Charter Beasts in Minion soon? By charter beasts, I assume you mean beasts that are neither gators nor pigs that work for the other minion warlocks, the pharaoh and the gatorman warlocks. I assume. Will there ever be a gargantuan pig? News at nine. But 
if that's your question, don't expect any charter beasts anytime soon, but do expect new hotness for minions. New hotness for minions. New hotness. I mean, okay. Helga 2 and Azazello alone. Helga 2. Does, is El, does Azazello have an official class? Is, has that been spoiled? Is that it English? has not been spoiled yet. Okay. The, two, the two classes people do not know are Lord Azazello and General Brug. Nice. One, one of them's a paladin, right? No. They're both neither neither of them are paladins. Actually. Oh, Gornis was asking for <laughs> character beasts, not charter beasts. Got it. Uh, I would not expect any new... Uh, but no comment. <laughs> so I base coded a lot of parts of Chuck here with that battlefield brown so I could work into like other tans and browns like I was talking about. So on his shirt, on this second layer Ooh, I of like that tan. Hammerfall khaki, I'm not painting a whole layer over his shirt. I'm leaving some of that brown in there as a natural shadow, which is an effect that you can get later on from your shade. But you can also just leave some of that layer there. And I like it. I like what you're doing there. I like it too. It's got a nice contrast against his cloak. Uh, I find that for both Wolf with no names shirt and pants, this technique works really good. Watch the brim of your hat. Sorry about Tana. that. Oh, that's the first time this time. So that's, I'm I know. I'm impressed because I saw it when you first sat down, and my first thought like, was like, Tanner's Tony hates rules. hats. Tony uh, hates hats. But and I was going to ask you to take it off, but I haven't seen it show up. So I was like, you know what? I'm a. Pro. I'm not going to make. I'm, I'm not going to make it a thing. Because I am a nice guy. The only thing that Tony hates more Usually. than uh, hats. Are green shirts. Man, Tony hates green shirts. Char Charles wore a green shirt on Tuesday. Did he? You yeah. know, that's awesome. At one of my old job, my very first job, I was a, a forklift operator at a warehouse, and we had a thing called Green Shirt Tuesday. So it just like popped into my <laughs> mind when you said Charles wore a green shirt on Tuesday. I was like, oh. heck yeah, Green Shirt Tuesday. Green Shirt Tuesday in this job, especially since we stream on Tuesdays, we in should, front of the green screen is like my worst nightmare. We should do a, a stream where we all show up on green. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> I'm going to rapid fire answer some of the questions that have been popping up in chat. Andrew DeRoma, I would have loved to see a guy in a rack as a model for Riot Quest. Who says that won't still happen, Andrew? That might still be... Character rack. Character rack could be a thing. Uh, Screwfizzle says, Azazello is a rogue and the other is a scout. He's talking about General Brug. You got half of that right. Uh, Geek Whoa. Toast. <laughs> uh, Geek Toast says, can you tell us any more about Lord Azazello? He's sure. He's big. His name is Lord Azazello. Uh, Where did he get the title? What is he the Lord of? It's just a Lord. He, he's the Castellan is his actual title. Uh, my, my, what, can I tell you more about Lord, Lord Azazello in Riot Quest or War Machine? I think he wants War Machine rules. Um, what would happen if Sorsha and Damiano had a baby? Uh, did we hear more about Fewer 4 yesterday? Chewy asks. Uh, I was on the Field of Fire podcast, which has been uh, f uh, shared on the various Facebook groups. You can go listen to that podcast with Emmanuel. We talk a lot about Riot Quest, and there are some Fewer 4 War Machine spoilers at the end of it. And uh, other than that, I think they want us all to wear full green uh, morph suits with just white gloves and uh, show up on the stream, Tony. That would be funny. Get us to 150 subs. Oh, look at that. And then yeah. we'll talk. Then we can do whatever we want. And then we'll talk. 150. Wow, he's blowing right right past the loot coin. Well, we've been trying to get that loot coin. I'm already buying sandwiches for the for the loot coin. Yeah, we got to go. We got to go above and beyond power, if you want green suits. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. So are you saying that if we get to 150 subs, you're going to buy us the green suits? I'm saying I'm not even going to consider it until we get to 150 subs. Wow, we can make it to 150 subs, then then it will be proven that this is a thing people want to see. Don't dismiss And then we can, me, start, uh, we can start exploring that possibility. I'm not going to make any promises while we haven't even unlocked the loot coin yet. I think you should make some promises, especially By when the way, I love you all. Thank you all for your subs. We appreciate it greatly. Tony's, Tony's laying down the law. Tony's been... Uh, Tony is the law. He's been a little aggressive lately, man. <laughs> Dude, Tony knows what's up. Tony's like, I already got to deal with my kids at home. I'm not dealing with you guys here. Using a little bit of Caspian flesh wash here. Nice. On the skin, putting the layer down. Good choices. We have a highlighted message from a non-by-proxy -by who is just blowing through his channel points today. 
says, the Fiora 4 spoiler is this. She is better than you think and is worth listening to the Field of Fire podcast for. She's a full-on caster, right? Yes, she is. Awesome. I'm excited for that model. Spoilers, she probably does fire stuff. And not only because she's a Riot Quest model. I'm just excited for that model. I, I'm really, really excited to use her in Riot Quest. We've been waiting for a new fighter for a while. Yeah, same with the guard. It'll be nice to have four guards now. Well, at the end of this cycle, at the end of the Mayhem block, there will be at least five of every class. Excellent. And there'll be a couple classes that get a few extras. Now, Jeff and I have been <coughs> saying this for months, but at the end of this block, Spec Ops, the format is going to be popping off the chain. I cannot wait to play some Spec Ops. We played a game of Spec Ops, uh, Jeff and I did, So for people right that before we left. Um, Las Vegas. Yeah. Yes. People that don't know what Spec Ops is, when you look at the throwdown uh, event format for Riot Quest, it gives you some different crew building options. Adventuring Party has been one of the most popular, where you play six model crews, and you have one of each class. Chuck makes a great guard, by the way. Uh, Spec Ops is where you pick two classes of the six, and all of your heroes must be from those classes. So you're trying, like, obviously a lot of people are going to try Gunner Scouts. Uh, fighter guard, fighter guards, but then you can like some. There's some really strong and weird combos, like scout rogues. I did scout rogue, yeah. or no, I did rogue uh, specialist. Rogue which specialist, was, which was actually legit. Yeah, scout specialist. Really cool. I think specialist guard can be pretty interesting, actually. Specialists be running around getting objectives while guards keep them alive. And we are also rapidly approaching the block one season finale, which will be the boss fight expansion, giving us a new co-op mode, a new boss to fight against, and a new model to play with in our regular games. Am I allowed to say that in my experience that boss fight was super fun? You are allowed to say you play tested it with me yesterday and then you had a good time, but you can't say anything about who it was or what happened. I wasn't planning on that, but I will tell you guys, it was super fun. And we barely won. We, <sighs> yeah. You rolled a nine. I rolled a nine with Bella. I, it's, I had to equip her. She was rolling four reds. Two blues and, and a one, one white. white. And if you had failed, you got killed by one of its uh, many, many different reactions to what you were doing. It was absolutely do or die, and we did. Oh, how we did. Uh, Panama yeah. wants to know, is the boss, play, boss fight a four-player experience? It is, compl it is as many players as you want from two to four. You can play. Actually, you could technically play it solo if you wanted to. You Ouch. could have a one-player boss fight. I can't so, imagine. So Majumbo here asks, how do I get over fear of painting for someone who has to paint his entire Menoth army and new to painting? Um, Start simple. Just, yeah, just take it one step at a time. That, that's like, it, there's no, there should never be any pressure on you to have to do a, an amazing job or for you to get the whole thing done. Like, have fun with it. Paint it because you want to. And, like, if you paint it because you want to and you paint it the way you want to, like, just take your time with it. Have a good time. Learn a lot. You're going to learn a lot when you paint a whole army like that. Um, I mean, I definitely know what you're talking about, like, uh, at least from the perspective of, like, looking at an entire army that's unpainted and being like, it's oh, daunting. Okay, all right, I got to start in somewhere. This is kind of kind of scary, right? Um, and, I mean, I think a lot of it just comes down to, like, you just got to, like, buckle in and, and just get started somewhere. Yeah, and I think, and, like, and I think knowing, kind of knowing what your approach is going to be helps too, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're painting because you're, you know, you need to play it in a tournament or you just want them painted because they look nice, but you're not really sure how you feel about painting, keep it nice and simple. Don't worry too much about the details or, or you know, lots of advanced techniques or even spending a lot of time, right? Just do it so it feels okay for you. If you are excited about painting, go crazy. Uh, but if you're pretty new, uh, it's worth considering only putting in as much attention to the details as you want to put in, not feeling like you have to attend to every part of the miniature with, with tons of love and attention, right? Just, just getting them done, having a good time. And watch this show every week will help because there's a bunch of painters here and a, a nice group of people in our chat to uh, give you some advice, answer some questions, and just basically be like uh, painting buddies. Yeah. And yeah, that's the big uh, thing is, is tune in so you can ask those questions. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah, Jordan, and I Jordan, mean, Jordan's an excellent and patient teacher. Yep. That was one of the things I was going to say. It's like if you ever have any questions, feel free to let me know. Like I'm more than welcome to answer any questions you have, be it on batch painting or 
painting Menifixes or what have you. Freehanding 06s and 09s, yeah. whatever it is. We have a couple highlighted messages I just want to hit real fast. DGC said, uh, and we missed it earlier, wouldn't a Rocket Man caster make an excellent gunner because big old cannons? I can't say that I disagree, but I also can't say that means it's happening anytime soon. Uh, the glitchy bit says, I did a lot of demos for Riot Quest at Captain Con this past weekend, and it got a lot of good reactions, mostly from current and former War Machine players. It was great seeing people pick it up so quick and immediately buy into it. Well, thank you for letting us know, and thank you for doing all the demos at Captain Con. Yeah, we definitely you. appreciate that. Daz, that I'm, I'm giving the glitchy bit. Yes, some we're going to clap for you. We're clapping into microphones. That's definitely uh, kind of the same feeling I got at Warfare Weekend, running those Riot Quest demos, and then people immediately saying, well, yep. I'm going to go buy this right now. Yeah, I, uh, it, it's funny. I actually just introduced the game to my roommates for the first time. Who are not tabletop who gamers. Are, who are absolutely not tabletop gamers. They're not even board gamers, frankly. Yeah. Um, and they had a really good time. Like, we just came home at 10 o'clock, and I was just like, you know what, you guys? You, you want to play a game? Because they, they know that I, I work for this company and that, they know what I do, but they never really have experienced it. So, yeah, they were, like, even interested enough. They were like, hey, let's let's go check out your convention, Lock and Load, specifically what we were talking about um, this year. So they they may they may have gotten the, the bug, as it were. So that's, I, that's cool. I have yet to play this game with anyone or teach somebody to play this game that said that they just didn't like it or didn't have fun. It's genuinely... Just so much fun, so easy to learn, and so dynamic. There's an actual layer of strategy in there when you start playing it a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it just scratches a lot of itches, at least for me. Uh, Jordan, we're about at the 10 minute mark. And so, Tony and Jordan, uh, do we have a P3 painters this week or no? Yeah, we got it. We do have we a, got couple a couple of P3 yeah. painters. Do we, wanna, do we wanna go ahead and. Uh do we want to do it now, yeah, or do we want to finish up with it? It's kind of up to you guys. What are you all in the mood for? I vote finish up with it. All right. Put some finishing touches on your models in so yeah. much you yeah, have time it, for. Yeah. Making some decent progress. We got quite yeah, a few I mean, colors got, on Chuck here. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling pretty good about this. He's he's pretty far along. Glitchy bit said a guy scored three v victory points to win a game in one of his demos, and he literally cheered. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I'm pretty sure I deafened like the entire audience when we played on Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, I knew I did the cabbage patch after I beat you on stream. Oh, you Let's won? just remind everybody. Oh, did I win? They even tried to cheat on me. Well, Sneak. we didn't try. We <laughs> successfully <laughs> cheated. I don't know if that's cheating. Bringing something you're not expecting is not cheating. Bringing something that's not released, maybe, is cheating. <laughs> <laughs> is it? We're playing a game. Not even bringing the actual model and having makeshift ones uh, made out of cardboard okay. of something that's not yeah, released. That's hey, fair. Hey, hey. You know what? You can make fun of the standee all you want, but don't you dare make fun of my turret. Don't you dare. You brought Charles in on it, too, and he's, as far as I can tell, yeah, just, I'm a rabble rouser. just pure good. Uh, Steve James has a question. He says, Jordan, what are you shading the skin with? I am shading the skin. On, on camera. On camera. <laughs> with like a, a mixture right. of uh, Bloodstone and Midland Flush. Uh, Striker911, I want to correct you. You say, look at me beating Tanner to game he's never played before. Uh, Tanner uh, has played... At least 80 games of Riot Quest? At least 80. Yeah, he's approaching 100. Yeah, Tanner is what we would call a Riot Quest. You guys need to understand model. that... An enthusiast? My roommate, one of my roommates, and one of my absolute best friends play Riot Quest with me at my house every week. Without fail. That it's usually gets played two or three nights a week in my house, at least. I'm going to move up to Midland Flesh on this skin and then hit it with a wash after that. <sighs> All right, this guy's coming along. I like him where this is going. This guy is uh, he's missing his real calling. This guy could either be a fantastic boxer or basketball player because he's just got some massive hands. Like, this guy, he should have a melee attack that's just his fists that's like three reds. He just punches you with Moldy. <laughs> he's pretty swole. Yeah. He's swoldy. Swoldy. Oh, no. Well, if I ever do a, a Dogwood 2, maybe it'll be him and he's, he's ripped off the cloak and his giant Please. muscles are gleaming. He better be a Warcaster. 
Ah. That would be amazing. I don't know that he's he's he don't know if he's sane enough. No, he would want to be Bradicus. He could be a junior. Oh, there's no juniors in hordes. Never mind. Yeah, there are. There's lessers. Oh, you're right. I'm lying. I'm f- yeah, you're right. I'm thinking of uh, Jack Marshalls. Excuse me. Correct. There, there, there is not exactly be- beast marshals. In Company of Iron, there are. Racked and Confused gave us a highlighted message that says, if you aren't cheating, you aren't trying. If you get cart- caught, you aren't trying hard enough. Best thing I ever heard in the army. <laughs> Thanks, Racked and Confused. Oh, Stryker, that is actually, I'm writing, i got to write that down. So Stryker just said, so after the Riot, co- Riot Quest coin emoji, we need a center up emoji. Oh my goodness, that's, that's so good. That's really good. That's so good. That is legit good. <laughs> they have good. a little piece of tape let that says chat, target lock. Let chat throw heat at you guys for being off camera. Center up, boys. That one's going to get center spammed. Up. Spammed hard. I think I'm doing decent on the centering after the first warning. Am I, am I wrong? I'm doing okay today. It's harder than it looks, okay? It is It is legitimately more difficult than you uh, think it is. Sporgle, the, this model is coming out on the 28th of this month. Along with Helga 2 and the Terrorizer question oh, mark? Oh, the Terrorizer. It's not cheating if it's off camera. <laughs> Can we talk about the Terrorizer for a second? If it's off camera, it doesn't exist. Yeah. Can we talk about the fact that the Terrorizer, if I'm not mistaken, can make his ranged and melee attack in the same turn? Right? Yeah. And then, what are the dice on his attacks? Uh, I think it's two blue, one red two. Uh, on the melee attack and three blue on the gun, if I'm not mistaken. I'm, I'm super so, duper hyped to get the terror. And if he gets super damaged. You give that bad boy the, uh, the fell charm, yeah. and now he's hitting stuff three times. Yeah. He'll just murder somebody by himself. Incredible. William on Facebook says, is, so Chuck 2 would be uh, Bradigus? You see, no. No, no, no. Mm. Here's my idea for Chuck 2. Live. Hasn't even been pitched to Matt. I want Wormwood to accidentally show up and try and make Chuck the next Cassius puppet. Oh, oh, that's good. And what happens is Chuck's insanity backflows into Wormwood, and you end up with... Party tree? Party. Like, like, yeah, basically party (laughs) tree. Party tree. (laughs) That's what I want. I'm into it. I want a large base model that is Wormwood holding Chuck, and they are both berserk and can't untangle from each other. So Wormwood Dogwood too. I think it would just be called the wood. Dogwood. <laughs> or Wood. Yeah. Alright, we were at the, the, the five ish minutes mark. How how long how long do you think you need to finish up and, and say here we are? Uh, well, why don't we why don't we show off our progress? Let's show off the progress. I said R like I have anything to do with these miniatures right now. I'm just over here drinking my coffee, chilling out, hanging with you guys. It's fun. Tony, you prepped them. That counts for kind yeah, of something. He participated. Yeah. yeah, that's All right. All right, so I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good. We're kind of in the shading phase of things. So I'm going to go back and I've shaded the face in a lot um, with various different mixtures for my palette. Some, some greens and some skin tones and a little bit of bloodstone uh, in there. And I'm going to pull back the face so that it's um, visible. And then redo the, the beard so it's nice and bright. Um, I need to do another layer of shades on the skin and then do some highlights and then we'll be good. I need to highlight and shade the, the, his jacket, highlight his pants, do the center bit in his belt, and uh, do the stone and the staff and we're good. I gotta put some more uh, color differential into his cloak here, make the dark or the bottom of it a little darker green and then work the color up as we go north of that. I like the... Uh, the shadows and the shading in his shirt there, the line shading. Throw a wash on that, and then obviously got to finish up his skin. It's got the second layer on it now, and I do like the color of that. And then obviously just a lot of effects here and there. Still got to do the stone. Didn't really get a start on that yet. Right now. Want to do some P3 painters? painters? Yeah, let's yeah. do some P3 so and painters. And since uh, we definitely have some new, new folks in the chat, why don't you tell them what P3 painters is all about? So P3 painters is a space for all of our community members who tune into our streams and even those who don't to show off work in progress photos of models that they're painting or completed progress photos. Um, Just kind of a way to to show us what you're doing and we pick a couple of models 
uh, every week to show off to the community and talk about what we like about them and yeah. share share it with everybody. Uh, and you can go we s not strictly through uh, Instagram, but it's the, the easiest way to do it. Uh, hashtag P3 Painters is the is the way to find that and just submit it. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's that. Here we go. As they say, what do we have? All right, let me pull up this first one. Okay, so we got this first one of Borka on a bear. And Has he got like a like a purplish skin tone, or is yeah. there blood all over him? No, he's got like his purplish skin tone. Either way, I'm happy with this. So here, purple skin tone trolls is sweet. Oh, the Can't clickies. Agree. Trolls with blood all over them is also sweet. Clickies Oops. are being a problem. Looks like the like the dirt, and mud, and kind of the wearing on his gauntlet there. I like I like this like the color tones that are in this uh, this ham the mace. Not yeah, that's that, not a hammer. The that blood was one on of the that. things that that's caught our attention. <laughs> is having the uh, the multi tone on that that mace right there look really cool. Oh, there we go. All right. Okay. Here we oh, go. We here go. we go. It's working again. All right. So there's a whole bork on the bear. Yeah, I love the tarnishing on the metal. I think that looks good. Yeah, excellent looking model. Yeah, got a little, a little blood, blood on the bear. Those. Here's the thing I like about how. Um, and that Anon is a non-proxy. Proxy yeah, model. I, yeah, yeah, I believe is in the chat right now. Um, is that the the blood is very sparing? Like, there's just kind of some splatters on the claws here. There's a little bit so, of red so on the nose. So one thing, like, a lot of people who do blood effects on models do way too much. Yeah, less is more. I've learned that less one the hard is way for sure. More. Unless you're doing like the whole the whole point of the model is that it's covered in blood. <laughs> Doom <Right>. Reavers. <laughs> yeah, like that. You either do it very very sparingly and tastefully, like this is done, or you just put it everywhere. Tasteful blood splatters. Yeah. See, so like even tasteful. from the shot, you can just see like these little just little tiny splatters on the fur of the arm here and just up on the head. Yeah, that's I like that. Very good. It sells the effect. All right. Thank you for that. Non by proxy. Thank you very much. And on to our next one. We've only got two today. This is from Mini Mangler. Yep. That is, I'm into this. Some sweet, sweet fire. I think I saw this on uh, Facebook. This is a great take this on is the a primal. This great icon. idea. Because obviously his sculpt is covered in like vegetation. Yeah, you just like uh, re sculpted a little bit to turn it into lava. This is very creative. Or you can even just paint it like lava, frankly. But if you like fill in, you, like put some putty on it to fill in all the little like divots where the the foliage texture is, like that definitely just reads like lava, which well, is cool. What I really like about this too is that Primal Archon is is fairly popular right now, if I understand correctly, mm -hmm. and this one at tournaments or at the game store or wherever is really going to stand out from others. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Make it look like yours. Yeah, that's excellent. That's just super creative. I love Next the idea. Step, lava glow. <laughs> Next step, LED system that in was, the model. That was what I was referring to. Oh, that's yeah. what you are? Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't, didn't come through, but that's what I meant. Yeah, just go to, um, to, to uh, a store that sells Gundam kits and get yourself some LEDs. Or just go to your local hardware store and get some LEDs. Stop making this so or difficult, just Hungerford. Just go to the hardware store, man. But those, but Just go to the hardware there. store. I'm looking at him. That's fine. But go anyways, to, go to the hardware store. That's going to be it for the show today, everybody. Buy a light Thank bulb. you so much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Just put it in there. Um, can't come soon enough. Thanks so much, and we will see you later. Bye. Thanks. Goodbye. For watching. Goodbye. 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 We are the worst barbershop quartet ever.